Okay, so I think last week, last rotation, I broke my Nightmare Hydro Run uh, record for, for score. And it was like 100 million, I think, something like that. A little over 100 million, uh, million, 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 million um, for Nightmare Hydra. And uh, this was the team that I was using. And I explained that I had like Inquisitor Shamael built in a lethal set. Thank you guys in my community for commenting and letting me know how could I uh, improve the, the, the run? How could I improve this team? The main thing that I gathered was that Inquisitor Shamael was more or less being wasted in a lethal set. And let me let me explain even further. Let me show you guys what, what I mean by that. So this is this is the current new personal best, and I'll I'll show you guys how I changed him from a lethal set to a reflex set and why it got me the extra damage that it did, right? So Inquisitor Shamael is built in reflex set but i had him in a lethal set however somebody pointed out that hey dude he already ignores 25 percent of the target's defense and ignores a further 25 percent of the target's defense for each buff on this champion which is going to be pretty much most of the time because of the team that i have him in he's always going to be buffed especially with podrick and um i was like oh what why, shit why didn't i uh why didn't that click with me it just didn't which is why I like sharing things with you guys, because oftentimes you guys are able to teach me something. Changed him out, and I said, whoever told me to put Inquisitor Shamael in reflex gear, you're a genius. My new personal best on Nightmare, still a semi-auto run. What does semi-auto mean? Means I let it run on audio. On, on uh, audio. It means I let it run on full auto. Not full auto, sorry. I let the run run on auto, but I was clicking certain, um, I was targeting. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And that got me up to 200 million, mil, two mil, over two mil. And why did this happen? Why, what, what about Inquisitor Shamael being in a reflex set changed it up and made this run a lot better? Well, in that initial run where I had Inquisitor Sham in lethal gear, he died early on. I think somewhere around like turn, I don't know, 40 or 50, something like that. He died relatively early on. But this time, he didn't die in a reflex set. As opposed to when he died in a lethal set. And because he didn't die, he was able to stop the head of mischief. Or not the head of mischief. He was able to stop the head of... Um, the head that places fears. Which is the main reason people have him in Hydra. Because his passive removes fears and he counterattacks. But basically, nobody can... like Fear is not a problem. But when he dies and he isn't there, he's not able to use his passive to stop the fears from being placed and every time the true fear gets placed on your champions you're wasting moves you're wasting a, a, a school kill uh, not school skill cooldowns right so if i tried to use nuts a3 but he had true fear on him and the true fear proc well guess what that goes on cooldown and that's basically a waste so a lot of damage potential was being wasted about a hundred a little over a hundred million points worth was being wasted because inquisitor shamael was dead inquisitor sham is a great support champion who is able to enable your champions your other champions to do the damage that they need to so michi sun wukong nut were putting in work and they were able to do so without having to worry about their skills being put on cooldown due to inquisitor shamael being in the run nekmothar is in a provoke set i guess i just show you guys but yeah big shout out to um mr inman who um, gave me that. Uh, big shout out to thanks, man. I appreciate that. Hopefully, I'll be able to take it further. I'm pretty sure I'll eventually do so. But let's go ahead and dive into the builds. Of course, we're going to start off with Inquisitor himself. Room to oil. Room to improve for glyphs. Reflex set, which reduces the random skill cooldown. We can upgrade this as well. Crit rate, defense, and speed with HP. I put him in an um, immortal set so that he could survive a little bit more because I felt like his HP was a little bit low. HP and defense were kind of low. Total stats right here, 54, 3.5, 3.6k, 240 speed. Um, if I could make him 100% crit rate with some extra crit damage, I would, but it's not a big deal. And I put some accuracy on him so that he has a better chance to decrease the uh, buff durations of my enemies, of the Hydra Heads. Skills right here, fully booked, Phantom Touch, and here are the Masteries right there. 
In fact, let me take myself off screen here so you guys can see everything without having to move my face. So you might be asking, uh, Burrito, why Reflex instead of Relentless? Because Relentless was actually something that I thought that I could run. And the the main thing was turn limit, right? Because if I want to take a run, a Hydra run to the turn limit, because I'm at that point where a lot of my runs do reach the turn limit, if I have Inquisitor Shamael in Relentless and he does take that extra turn, it counts as a turn. And it's kind of wasted because his A1 isn't going to do much, especially, you know, in a in a non-savage set, which there's more utility here. There's more value in a reflex set now that I'm doing it myself. But this isn't going to do much damage. It's not going to do more damage than like Sun Wukong or Michinaki. In terms of putting out more damage, it's better if I just run a reflex set hit the A2 whenever I can, but I'm not going to waste turns on Inquisitor's A1, which is what's going to happen if I do a Relentless set. Here is Sun Wukong, built in a lethal set, max damage, oh, well, currently, actually. For now, until I re-roll some of these here, I have them some in some accuracy, so I could sometimes place some block buffs. I'm trying to get a little bit of a hybrid use out of him. Fully booked, Soul Reap. And we're taking Helm Smasher down here. Who else did I have in that team? Let me see here. Oops. Uh, Nut, Nekmo, Michinaki. Let's look at Nut. Actually, Podrick was on here. Podrick is actually somebody I like in Relentless Set because his utility is pretty high. Fills turn meter, removes debuffs, increased speed. This enables us to be able to do more, plus his passive which gives the respective champion, based on the type of champion that they are, um, buffs. So buffs are always going to stay on all my champions as long as he's taking his turns. And then his A2 places continuous heals, restores destroyed max HP, which is good because one of the Hydra heads actually destroys max HP. And then you do um, ally attack. And then a chance to uh, do uh, decrease the cooldown of a random active ally skill. Built in Relentless, mainly for speed and survivability. This is the same Podrig that I use in Hard Fire Night 10, which, by the way, if you, seen, if you haven't seen my video on how to do Hard Fire Night 10, you should. I think it's really great. He absolutely massacres Hard Fire Night. And uh, it's 100%. It's a 100% run. I've done over 300 runs, not a single damn fail. Taking timely intervention so that. Um, turn meter gets boosted whenever a hero ally drops below 25%. Cycle of Revenge, anytime somebody is hit with a crit hit, has a chance to increase turn meter. You want him taking as many turns as possible. Cycle of Magic, so that, of course, he cycles through his moves a lot faster. Lasting Gifts. Those are the main things there. Sun Wukong, we already talked about, I think. I just talked about him. Uh, nut, Newt. This is my Fire Knight Nut. Here are the pieces of gear. Mostly focusing on building him out for damage. Except I don't have the Savage gear to make it happen. If I could put him in Savage, he'd be doing a lot better. Is this it? This is a cell. This is also a cell. Blood Shield Ring. Not that important, but sometimes it helps. And then we have Res on him as well. I was trying to build him with a decent amount of Res, which this is okay for Hydra because I don't want his counterattack being stolen. And then this is for Fire Knight because of his A1, which pushes the turn meter back because of Freeze on hard Fire Knight. He's mostly here for his A1 or his A3, which is his big hitter. Decreases each uh, target's defense by 30%, up to 30%, then heals by 30% of the damage dealt. And it also hits pretty damn hard. Enemy max HP move. On one of the headless heads, I was hitting for over 500k. This is not in a Savage set. So imagine. If I put him in Savage or Merciless. Mastery is here. Giant Slayer. I'm considering maybe changing him out to Helm Smasher because of his A3 doing so much damage, but um, yeah, not sure yet. Maybe keep it on Giant Slayer. Does this count as bonus damage, like an extra attack against the... I think it does. Yeah, no, this this procs. This procs and it counts as... It counts as a as a hit against the Fire Knight. I think it does. I'm pretty sure because I went up against, I went up against the Sand Devil the other day, 
and um, this is my new team. But the the speed tunes were off, and I accidentally woke up the Sand Devil because of the Giant Slayer proc. Where was I? Let me get back to back to this. Uh, so we talk. We gotta talk about Michinaki and Nekmo. Michinaki is basically here for extra damage and buff removal, but Hex is the main thing here, right? So it removes all buffs from each target, which is helpful, especially if enemies get the reflect damage or counterattack, or whatever buff might have you. Then um, Hex also spreads out the damage, and it allows you to target the Head of Mischief, which steals buffs and then spreads them. AoE decrease defense and decrease attack. HP burns on the A1. Passive, whenever an ally attacks an enemy under Hex, Champion has a 50% chance to join in and team up to join the attack. Really, 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 really great fucking champion for, I can't even, like, I wish I had more of him. I wish I had more of him. Such an awesome champion. Brimstone, of course. Mastery is right here. Relentless set, you want him taking as many turns as possible so that he can continue to keep up the Hex and the decreased defense, maybe even place HP burns, which really helps against the head that places the poison mist cloud things. Oftentimes what I do is if I can at least burn the head of poison, the poison head cloud, um, I can start targeting that head doing uh, appropriate damage instead of weak hitting. Focusing on speed for Relentless, making sure we're... Oh, I got to change his build soon. I got to rework him. Defense, because he's a defense-based champion. And then accuracy, of course. And the last guy was Nekmo. Oops. Nekmo Thar is in a Provoke set. A Provoke set is going to be useful against the Head of Cleansing so that um, the Head of Cleansing can't take a turn. 30% chance. By the way, you don't need accuracy for this, but you do want accuracy for his other moves. But for Provokes, you don't need accuracy. And uh, it's only 30%, but it's still nice to have. And I think I actually have Sniper on him. Oh, no, you can't. Never mind. It doesn't increase the... Never mind. We'll uh, double back here. Provoke set for the reason that I just explained. And then Immortal to get some extra heals. Focusing mainly on speed, accuracy, and some survivability here. I wouldn't really worry about building damage with him. You do want counterattack on him as much as possible because um, Nekmo's attack is an AoE. And you want to make sure you're trying to keep that Provoke up on that one head. Accuracy. Room for improvement there. Enchantments, oils, changing gear out. Fully booked. Cruelty blessing. Now, there is probably going to be... It's probably going to be soon. I might want to change this out. Because this only decreases up to 5%. After that, it's gone. I'm probably going to get a lot more use out of him with his blessings if I change him out to something like... Maybe even like Phantom Touch, right? Or crushing rend. First hit each round will ignore a percentage. Oh, it's only the first hit on each round. So never mind, this is not it either. Like this still helps. But I'm not sure how much more than something like Phantom Touch. Maybe one of you guys would know more than I do, which is highly likely. And then uh, here are the masteries for Negmothar as well. And if I can show you guys the presets that I have for it, let me go ahead and show you the presets that I had. This is the team. Necmo, prioritize the A3 into the A2. Decrease speed and leech also helps to make sure that we're going ahead of the Hydra heads. And we're also healing because leech is like a mini lifesteal. And then um, this is really nice because it grants an extra turn and we have a turn meter boost for our entire team. That's why Necmo is such a great champion, especially in Provoke. Not we're, I'm actually going to, I actually closed out the A. Too, because I didn't want to give a chance for the head to steal counterattack at all. So there's doing that. And then we want to make sure we are turning on the AI settings for Sun Wukong's A3 and the A2, because oftentimes Sun Wukong doesn't even use his A2 if you don't set the priority there. This is for the block buffs, which is nice because it's placed. Right here, it says placed. 
before attacking. It places the block buffs and then steals. And that's nice because this actually places through the poison clouds. Podrig, A3 into the A2. And then Michinaki, A2, or A3 into the A2, right? Placing the hex. Inquisitor Shamael, you just kind of leave him to his own devices. You don't have to do this, I just do it for the sake of it. Yeah, there you go.